In 2015, the residents of a small Vermont community were shocked to learn that one of their own, Ronald Reed, a retired gas station attendant and janitor, was worth almost $8 million at the time of his death. He left about $6 million to his local library and hospital, which was a generous donation by anyone's standards. Many people were surprised that someone with modest means and without a fancy job could accumulate such vast wealth. Ronald Reed came from an impoverished farming family and had to walk or hitchhike four miles daily to get to high school. He was the first one in his family to graduate from high school. During World War II, he served in Italy as a military policeman in the United States Army. He worked as a gas station attendant and mechanic in Brattleboro, Vermont for approximately 25 years after being honorably discharged from the military in 1945. After retiring for one year, he took a part-time janitorial job at J.C. Penney, where he worked for 17 years until 1997. When he died in 2014, he gained media attention for donating $1.2 million to Brooks Memorial Library and $4.8 million to Brattleboro Memorial Hospital. His inspiring story of starting from humble beginnings and achieving financial success through investing was featured in numerous newspapers and magazines. So how did he pull this off? Ronald Reed's life, which was 92 years long, saw him do many things that financial experts recommend. The strategies that Ronald Reed employed to grow his wealth are ones that anyone can use. Let's explore them one by one. Firstly, he was patient. Reed's wealth grew over many decades due to the power of compounding. By earning an annual growth rate of 10%, his wealth grew exponentially over time. When he had accumulated $500,000, a 10% gain would increase his wealth by $50,000, taking him to $550,000. However, when he hit $1 million, a 10% gain would earn him $100,000, taking him to $1.1 million. At the $3 million mark, a 10% gain would be worth a whopping $300,000, and at $5 million, it would generate half a million dollars. Secondly, he lived below his means. Ronald Reed lived way below his means by driving an old, inexpensive car, and keeping his old coat together with safety pins. He rarely ate out except for inexpensive breakfasts at his local hospital's cafe. He looked more down on his luck than wealthy, leading one neighbor to knit him a hat, and another to pay for his meal. When visiting his lawyer, he would park far away and take a longer walk than necessary to avoid having to put change in a parking meter. His recreation wasn't costly either. Instead of paying for time on golf courses or travel, Mr. Reed enjoyed chopping wood, which also saved him some money for heating. He also avoided buying too many books by patronizing the local library. Thirdly, he invested in stocks. The stock market is one of the most powerful ways to build wealth, and Mr. Reed invested in it effectively. His portfolio featured many familiar blue chip names, such as Procter & Gamble, J.P. Morgan Chase, General Electric, and Dow. He also held significant positions in companies such as AT&T, J.M. Smucker, CVS Health, Bank of America, General Motors, Deere, and Johnson & Johnson. One could study and select individual stocks on their own, as Reed did, but one can do quite well over the long haul by sticking with low-fee, broad market index funds such as one that tracks the S&P 500 index of 500 of America's biggest companies. Fourthly, he invested in dividend-paying stocks. Keeping a good portion of your assets in dividend-paying stocks tends to lead to better results than avoiding dividend payers, as various studies have shown. For example, researchers Eugene Farmer and Kenneth French, studying data from 1927 to 2014, found that dividend payers outperformed non-payers, averaging 10.4% annual growth versus 8.5%. It is important to note that Ronald Reed was not a perfect investor, as some of his investments did not perform well, such as Lehman Brothers. Furthermore, at the time of his death, he owned approximately 95 stocks, which can be difficult to manage compared to a more manageable 10 to 20 stocks. In general, it is recommended to focus your investments on your best ideas rather than spreading your money too thin. If you are not confident in your ability to manage your investments, holding more stocks can be safer, and investing in index funds can be even better. Despite these caveats, Mr. Reed's investment strategy is one that we can all learn from to some extent, and it can help us build wealth over time. And building wealth is more about how you behave than what you know. This is what Morgan Housel tells us in his amazing book The Psychology of Money. You can get a quick summary of the book in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to know more about money, business, and the economy in general.